Hi everyone, welcome back into the studio. What we're going to do today is I'm going to take you along, and you know how I like to do this every once in a while, take you along on a commission painting I got to do. So we'll take a break from some of the beginning lessons. I'm going to take you into a more advanced lesson. Those of you the beginners, just kind of follow along and, you know, kind of learn some of the ideas, some of the things that you're going to go, some of the things you're going to learn into the future, but some, you know, get some ideas of it and start hearing some of the words and stuff that we're using, okay? All right, for the palette, we're going to expand it out today, and this is my, what we call the Dave's Favorites. It's uh, the full listing of all the colors are underneath or, or, or in the video description of this video. And one color that I am adding to it uh, out here today is the ultramarine blue. And part of it is because of the actual painting I'm gonna do. So what I have over here is a 14 by 18 panel, wood panel. And then I've given it a coat of canvas prep medium and sanded it lightly, but I left a little bit of texturing on it. So you could do a painting like this on a canvas. The only thing is you want to fill up the majority of the weave of the canvas because I'm going to be painting a rose with these flowers today. And the rose uh, petals can sometimes be, get a little frustrating if you fight the weave too much. So reduce the weave by filling it up a, a, a little bit first with some of the canvas prep medium. Uh, these are the, the flowers. Now, the uh, uh, person that has consigned this painting, he's he watches our videos here all the time, so I thought, oh, it'd be fun to film it so he can see his painting. This is a birthday present for his mother, and so she loves African violets, and you can see there's, I went and pulled out all different kinds of the colors of them, but basically they're going to be blues through the violets to the red violets. So when we look at our color scheme that I have out here, color wheel, those of you the beginners that have been following along, we're going to be working a lot over here. And what I want to do is also pull in some accent complement colors. So that's why I put out my range. That's why I went back to my range of my yellows. These will be complements to the violets that we're going to use over here. Now, phthalo green blue that we know sits right here. It does not, it makes nice violets, but the best one that makes the violets, we know the brightest, clearest colors come further out on the wheel. So the phthalo, uh, the, excuse me, the, uh, Pigment Blue 29, the ultramarine blue, makes the, by far the prettiest violet colors. And you put those right with the, the red violet here, or even our, um, our quinacridone violet over here. It's just going to make beautiful violet colors all throughout here, which is going to be the majority of our, our flowers. So we can do it with phthalo blue. Ultramarine blue gives you much, much bigger range. So I have ultramarine blue out there along with the phthalo blue. And then the rest of the colors, Hansa, Dari Light Yellow, Yellow Oxide, Naphthol Red Light, Burnt Sienna, Pine Green, my blues, Quinacridone Violet, Red Violet, and White. I also put out some open medium. This is the Derivan open medium that I do. I use a lot when I paint all of Prima. And I have my extender medium out here into a cap. The extender medium is these do basically the same thing. This is really thin, so I use this when I want to thin down the acrylics and stuff, and I use this when I want to paint thicker. It's also, the open medium is a little more sticky and it has some binder in it, so I can get, I can lay in thicker colors. So I usually start with extender and then slowly work into the open medium. For my brushes, I'm gonna use just my fusion brushes, long handle brushes, and I really like um, eight or 10 for the majority of my painting. This is a 10. Uh, one I have right out here, and this is my one inch and my half and my three quarter inch. But I'm going to start out with a just an old fusion uh, brush here that I used for years and years for varnishing. Then it became just a base coat brush. So I'm going to start out with that, and I'm going to wash in some colors. I'm going to I'm going to paint the African violets. That's his mom's favorite flower, and but I'm going to add a rose or two into this because it adds an elegance to it. And so I brought out some that I had. I've already painted here on the channel. These, and this is the framing that we do here. So I have a frame that's gonna come just like about that one right over there by that pink rose and stuff that's coming. It's gonna call the linen liner frame. That's gonna be with a gold trim on it. And I love the colors that are in that. So I'm gonna kinda 
keep that in mind when I'm painting when I'm painting there. In other words, when you're going to create something, grab yourself all kinds of things to look at. So I've got lots of violet flowers. I've got other flowers that I've painted before to kind of spark my, uh, you know, spark my creativity and stuff. Don't just sit down with a blank canvas. Grab stuff, put it around so you have all kinds of stuff to look at, okay? And uh, that'll get you started. Now, the very best way to start is, you know, I might be coming in here and doing some thick paint, but I'm going to start out thin, thin washes. When you're starting out something and you don't quite know where you're going to go, you know, normally I tell you, make a plan. Well, I'm going to create this one. And so I'm going to start out thin and I'm going to slowly uh, build it up and I can go back and revisit any area that I want to later on. Okay, so I have my my board It's 14 inches. It's 18 inches. This is one quarter inch uh, lightweight uh, it's a, a, a lightweight panel and um, I'm going to you could use MDF you could use all different hardboard you can use anything you want and uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to use some water some dirty water from previous paintings here dirty <laughs> and I'm going to take some light color some white and I'm just going to take this off color here one color that I really like to use is my green and my burnt sienna I love these colors together and sometimes I'll add a little bit of blue and stuff but I love these kinds of colors together now I don't always mix it up real well add lots of water and I'm just going to kind of start dripping this everywhere see this is a real warm color for it it's going to go really well with our linen liner that we're going to have you know back up over there so you can see that's that color but i want this i want this background to be very contemporary here and we'll uh, drop this in yeah. i just think it's going to be fun because he's going to be able to show his mom hey you can go watch your painting being created. I just think this is going to be great. Watches our paintings all the time. And not haven't got him painting yet, but we will. We will. It's a. It, it is a goal. And now I'm going to take the color a little bit heavier, maybe a little bit more water here, and let's just work in through some of this area. Now, see, what I like to do is just kind of tamp this around and add some of the the interest that's going to go around. Uh, it, it's creates a bit of the the interest area so I want to concentrate right in here this is going to be the areas of my flowers most of what I'm doing right in there is going to cover up so uh, you know I don't want to spend a tremendous amount of time but I want this I want some of this interest and stuff that comes out here like this that does different things and sometimes I, I when you see me I like to use my paper towel to grab some of this stuff and pull this out and I like the real modeled kind of backgrounds and stuff that we have now one of the things after we start something like this is we got to think about this background okay we got to think about this background how much interest we want this to have so when you look at the background that's here and you compare it to the flowers that we have here color and one of the things I, I, I teach in my color theory class is color has weight. And the heaviest weighted uh, colors really are those violets. They're dark and they're heavy. And the violets will sit real dark and heavy on here. So if I'm going to look at creating these African violets right into here, I'm going to probably want to increase my dark area in here for these colors to play against here. I, it's a it's a, a type of contrast we call simultaneous contrast and I'm looking for that because if I leave this background really really super light that means I got to reduce the weight of those African violets by lightening them up or making them more transparent okay and then so we can use some of those darker colors in here so that's what I will do now is I will look to balance the color that I'm going to be using in my African violets into my background. So I'm going to take some of those colors that I like. Now, the African violets are going to be really cool colors. These are really warm that I'm working on right now. And that's really going to be kind of nice. But see, see these colors here, when you look at that compared to the flowers, this is starting to give more weight to I have. Now, I want to keep this out here light because I just think that 
it looks better. <laughs> so, but we'll we'll keep this nice warm and see. I'll use different parts of my brush and pulling it out through here to create. So we'll have some of this warm color right out through here, and then we'll, we're going to increase the weight of the color down through here. Now I'm going to do some other things to it too, but I'm just going to take some of this off. I, I do like to use the paper towel to do that. This is one of my favorite things to make some of those contemporary backgrounds like that. And see, I like that. I, just, I think that looks really great there like that. Now, what I'm going to do is harmonize because I've got a real warm background. So now, next step is I'm going to harmonize my color, my background, with the flowers that I'm going to do with some of the violets. So I'm going to take and I can even do this on the lighter version here. I'm going to take some ultramarine blue. Let's take a little bit of the red violet. I had quinacrid on there, but let's go over to the red violet here. And we're going to create some of the violet colors. Let's add a bit of water to this. Now, if I want to soften it even more, I can slide it over here and see how that grays that down from here. So I can look at, see what it is that I want to do. But I want to take some of those colors that I will see into those flowers and I want to add that into my background back through here. That is going to create a harmony. Now, you can do it in the light version. For example, I can take this and really lighten it up right out through here and put a streak or so out to the, the further outside just so you start to, you know, so you're going to see some of that color here to the outside. That's the big thing. And it's a color. I, I don't... I don't look for a particular stroke as much as I look for a color. And so I, I'm carrying the colors or some of the things. I like those far ones right over there, some of those colors that I want to have here. So I might want to take this out. Now, what is a, what are you thinking here? What I'm thinking as a contemporary painter is that this may be express some back flowers or something like that, something that's into the the background back there. So now you see the whole feeling of the background changes and now you can you can visualize some of these colors coming up onto here pretty easy and so that's one of the things I do. Let me um, just kind of move this off to the side. It's all good color. We just save it here for a little bit and let's add a bit more contrast right into that center and we can do it now you can do it later doesn't make a difference i'm going to put a little blue into this as well and i'm going to increase the the contrast of the colors right into here where i want to have those those that rose and some of these violets and stuff come out so i might and see we might even just put a darker strike of that the purples and stuff right in there like that. That is very much what a contemporary would be. And see what I'm doing is I'm just thinking of, I'm thinking about my flowers coming into here now. And I'll just wipe some of that back here. What my flowers and stuff coming in are going to do, I'm going to put a rose right into here and I'm going to put those African violets. So now the African violets and those violets are taking over, but I've got some good contrast breaking in some of these other areas. Now, you know, later on, like, you know, if you're looking at some of the other uh, impressionistic artists, contemporary impressionists, like, you know, Richard Smith or something like that, they would take in like a, a, a burnt sienna and add a, a real warm tone right in there that's going to play against these violets. And see, that's kind of looks nice. You can do it with your knife. We can do it later. You know, those are all kinds of decisions that we can make after we get some of our, our flowers and stuff on. But I'm probably going to want to put in a few marks of just uh, what we call this color, sparks of color, these lighter colors like right out through here, you know, maybe a nice violet or something like that that comes right out into the, into the background. And you can see that brush mark of, of texture that's right there. It's too bad some of that was going to cover up, but that just gives you some nice things. So you can build, you can take, you know, and just touch little bits of these colors out like this. This is what gives you a, a really nice, unique background when you're going to do a lot of a, a painting here. You slowly work through and add some fun little things, the knife, the brush, you know. And sometimes I love the backgrounds more than do the painting as I'm just, you know, this kind of feeling, getting a feeling here for it. But, you know, you can create some really interesting looks. And that's what a, you know, a wonderful uh, contemporary painter would do is look for some of that 
movement and stuff coming down. Let's grab a bit of that, just a bit of that mark of that violet coming right down here. You could streak that down a bit. Yeah, that's going to give you a you know a nice look to it. Now, if you want this to soften out a little bit more, you can take some of this and and push it out a little bit further. Maybe you like that color. So just take some of this um, water here. Let's actually, let's push, because we have some of the violets and stuff, but we don't have this kind of bluer tone right there. So let me wrench just a bit of that out and grab some more blue of a tone here. Just a bit more blue, a little ultramarine blue. We'll head just a touch more blue and some white here. And because we're going to have some of these violets come out just a bit more blue. And we can take that further out out here and soften that into that background. So if you want to soften like, uh, you know, okay, let's, for like this, for example, soften this out here. Let's grab a lot more water than that, Dave. It's a little heavy, so I'm real thin, real thin here. And push some of that down like this, just so that that whole background there, color, I'm pushing away the white, dropping the value of the background. It's going to reduce the overall contrast there of that particular color there. So, and, you know, we might, we might come back later and soften that a little bit more. You know, we don't know. But the majority of, I mean, it looks really, really fun. And that's what you want to do is you want to have some fun with it. But the, the sad thing is the majority of this is all going to cover up. Now I'm just going to wipe back some of this. And then we're going to come in here. And I'll use my uh, tin here. We'll come in with my tin. And I'm going to take some white here and some blue and some of my burnt sienna and create this kind of this nice gray. It'll be about a value seven. Yeah, it's about a value seven kind of grayish color here. Okay, and I'm going to use this to basically start the main part of my rose. I love that in there. I don't want to cover it up too much. So let's put the rose right in here. We'll do a smaller rose so that it uh, doesn't overpower the violets too much because this painting is their, her favorite flower is the violet. So what I'm going to do is, I, you see me, I just push to the, I just kind of push the, the uh, shape of the rose. I want it a little bit oval, a little bit oval this way will rock your rose, turn your rose. You don't want to have a perfect circle around here. And I'm going to build up the front of that just a bit. Let's take a cool color, a nice cool violet for the center. And I'll get a darker color with phthalo blue. And it'll be a, it'll be a good color too. One that I use a lot. Let's push that right into here. Now I don't want to get it too violet. So I'm going to push some of that in. And then I'm going to reach over and grab some quinacridone to take it back up towards these other African violets. I want to, see I'm just doing small little touches moving out like this. I want that color to, to diminish before it gets out there towards that background. So what I envision, just like I teach you with the roses, I envision the three circles. This is the the center of the bowl swinging out this way. The darkest color belongs down in here into the throat. Now, so I have that in there. I like some of this explosion of color and stuff coming out over this way. What I want to do is I want to warm some of the front. So what's the complement of some of the, the yellow, I mean, of the uh, violets is our yellow. So I'm going to take a little bit of, of the, this yellow here, which is yellow oxide. Now, I grab it because it's opaque. And then I grab the Hansa to pump it up and give it a little bit of, of brightness. And I'm going to add some white to get back up close to with the value of the gray that I was using here. This means I'm just adding an accent tone into this area of the rose that's going to warm it up. So now you can see that warmth coming right in there on that area of the rose. And I might come back here with a bit of the light color and just toss in some ideas of back petals or something like that and uh, or push the edge just to, just to get a little bit here 
of more movement. I'm going to redo all of this several times. But now let's come back in, pick up more white. I'm not going to go to pure white, but let's keep it right between these two. As a matter of fact, a good color right between those two. The gray, which is slightly cool, and this warm here. And I'm going to lighten it up. And we'll use this to start drawing some of our, our outside petals here, pulling in towards the center part of the rose here. So I imagine where the stem of the rose is, and I kind of angle these petals coming in towards that stem there, okay? And we'll pick up some more. So one right up here in the front might just slowly turn so it goes over to the other side. So I have lots and lots of beginning uh, videos to show you how to start out painting these kinds of roses. But I'm going to paint one here. It's a little bit more advanced here. And then we'll put African, and we'll paint another one probably coming down here, and then we'll fill up the composition with the African violets. So we'll put a bit more in through here, right into there. Now I want to... I want to bring some of these tones into the rose a little bit more. I constantly look at carrying my tone and crossing the tone. So I'm going to grab some quinacridone here. But I want to carry this as the coolness in here to the rose on that side. And notice how I use a variety of, of marks. These are called marks, strokes. I use some different ones here because that creates a different feeling of movement for the rose as well here. So let's get a bit more of this light color here. We'll build that up a bit more. Pull this down. Leave a little bit of that violet comes out of my brush. That's kind of nice. Just a touch more of the violet sometimes and over here. So I constantly like to mix all kinds of colors or add all kinds of colors to my uh, brush because that uh, makes the rose, all these colors come off slightly different. Let's add another little smaller light petal right out here. Sometimes I'll push this and see what I do when I do that is I'm pushing for the movement. I'm looking for movement into the petals. I'm not trying to paint perfect petals here. I, will, I can edge them and use a technique called the petal edging technique if I want to draw perfect petals. But a lot of times I push so I push the movement. Where's that petal going? And that's where I, that's what I like to paint into it. Let's get a little warmer. As I come to the front, I want to get the rose a little warmer, a little heavier in paint. And so you'll see me do quick strikes. So I pick up more paint, more warmth, and I do quick strikes to lay that color on and lift off the brush so I don't destroy my shadow. And sometimes I will push like this to bring that shadow back up a little higher. So what I'm doing is rolling the paint off of the surface here like that and revealing the, the shadow again. And that gives me room to add more, more petals here because I can't just keep going lighter and lighter. You won't be able to see the color. So I have to reveal sometimes the shadow to, uh, so that you can see more stuff going on in the, in the rows more petals that are going to go on into the rows here. So let's get that. Let's put a bit more of a pretty violet right in here into this rose. See, I like that quinacridone. That's going to be real pretty. A little, I call it a nice little spark of a color. That'll be real pretty in there, especially when we start adding the violets into this, into this painting here. So let's just add some of that around. And when I paint the main rose like this, or my main rose, I will revisit it several times during the painting. This is what I call, those of you that paint with me all the time, this is what I call the queen. She's the queen of the painting here. She's going she's gonna to control all of the, the, the uh, interest of the painting, but uh, we want to, her not to have so much that she takes away from what, you know, my customer wants as the most important flower which is going to be the violets so we're going to we're going to paint her and then we'll calm her down a little bit here but let's just pull some of this pretty color in 
set that right in there like that nice pretty little rose coming here we'll put a little cooler color a little cooler gray maybe right out here and help set some of those outside petals and then i'm just going to push so i get that movement that in and out movement into the rose there that's what i'm looking for more than anything maybe a idea of the side petals here so you don't need very much there to really say you know the the petals here you just need a little i just use the chisel of the brush here and just kind of draw down a bit and that and that movement see that movement is going to let you see petals in there in that rose and i haven't really painted them i'm going to add a bit of open medium here and i'll do this just so this color slides a bit and uh, it reduces the power the opaqueness of the color it also slows down the drying time but it's reducing the opaqueness which is what i want i'm going to cool that slightly because i'm over here on the shadow side so i want to cool this shadow side of this rose down a bit here and um, maybe paint then we'll then we'll warm up just a bit i want some of this yellow to show up in here we'll warm up just a bit see i'm just going to curve this because this is my bowl coming around here so i want my movement here to curve and sometimes again i'll pull out like that so i reveal that shadow you must keep this shadow this is what i call the bowl shadow here because that gives roundness to the rose you don't want to lose that shadow as a matter of fact let's just push that up and around a bit here so we see a bit of it i took off a little bit too much just wanted to show you how to do that so we can correct it. You you know, you make mistakes all the time. Don't get frustrated with them. Laugh it out. Just like, what did I do that? Well, you know, you just laugh yourself through it because we can correct it. We're professionals. We can correct it. I'm going to pull a petal in like that and blur this edge in. And then we'll reset this petal. Sometimes I'll reset, you know, there there are times that... Uh, I fight roses and their shapes and stuff and you know it doesn't happen that often but I do fight them and you know it takes um, it can get frustrating and stuff with it and I understand you know I was I'm right where some of my beginners are here trying to find that shape it just takes a practice and do it again do it again again don't get frustrated with it you know you're gonna you learn from every time you paint. So what I'm doing here is picking up more color. And as I lay this, because I'm getting a lot of paint, as I lay this on, my brush is real light in my hand, and I just hit the area and lay off some thicker paint right where I want that to be in that rose, okay? And let's just thicken up this area right here just a bit. See, I don't have to do petals as much as I... I have to create this forward bowl here. And see, I did that all with my left hand. Sometimes I'll paint with my, sometimes I'll pull with my left hand. Even though I'm right-handed, I paint with both hands because this hand will give me a different movement than this hand. And so if I've pulled it once, you saw me pull it earlier with my right hand, I will sometimes go back and pull with my left hand just to get a different look to it. And it does work for me, okay? I'm not crazy, it does work. So I'm going to build up the light just a bit more right in here. A little bit of texture, maybe just a mark or two there, just to, just to spark a color here. I like that. I'm going to build this up just a bit more here. Just a pretty little mark there. Let's, um, I like that. Maybe, now this is the petal edging technique. I load the corner of the brush up with the paint here see so if I wanted to maybe draw around a little bit more of a petal draw the edge of a petal I just lean over onto that and I can draw the edge of a petal so I'm going to put a little bit of that movement in here and then take some of it out here just to create a little bit more roundness right in there to the to the bowl and I don't want to make that that center here and I'm real close make that center in there a, a two let's put this I don't want to make it too dark compared to the rest of the rose because that will uh, create like a little eye and a little eyeball in there so I'm going to lighten that up just a bit 
So I look at that. Do I have that center a little too dark? And maybe just some small little marks, little half circle marks here. Maybe just pull around, paint the movement, paint the circular movement there. Just a few little marks to say, okay, there's a, there's a rose. Now I can go back and add some of that if I decide to, but I don't think I need to. Maybe a little open medium. Sometimes I'll use some extender just to make it thin. Let's grab some of this gray, some of this thin out here, and maybe add just a whisper more of a movement here to these outside petals. It gives just a bit more to the rose here. So I look for that oval shape because it's turning there. And I like that. I'm going to add, I'm going to, that took out too much, I think, on that center. I'll probably change it back here later on, but I took out just a touch too much. So we'll just lightly with some of our quinacridone and hit just a bit of that. So I have a bit of the red showing up and a bit of that quinacridone. Now see, when I go paint these flowers, I'm seeing those colors right there of these African violets into that rose, and that's what I want. Let's go down and paint a more casual one here, a little lower, take some of our dirty grays. Let's paint a casual one right down here, okay? And I'll turn it slightly this way here. Do you see a rose? And when I paint a casual one, I'll blur it out a little bit more. This is gonna be a back one. Now, this will show you what really makes a rose is that center. And that's why I always look at that center. So I'll turn this mark right into a rose by pushing that dark color down into the center, lifting the pressure as it comes out, painting little half circles here coming out, and then giving it a bowl shadow here shadow down to this low side right down to there you'll see a rose start to come out and i'm going to add just a touch more dark here right to this center right here let's just keep a bit more right in there then i'll grab some of my warm now i don't want to make this as as light or as warm as the top one here but i'll put right across the top here and so I'm starting, and I'm going to stop right in here. That's the bowl of my rose right there, okay? And now I'm going to pick up just a little bit more. I'll go a little lighter, and we'll set this petal up right on top of this one right here. So we'll let the edge of this one come up to the same height in the composition as the other. I do that quite a bit in my roses because it, in my florals, because it creates a, a step basically a step between the, the two here and so very contemporary here let's grab a couple of petals out through here so you see I, I imagine the stem coming right in here and so I pull in towards that imagine that stem hitting here all my marks are coming in here my little strokes coming in towards that so as I go to the downside down here we'll gray this up a bit a bit of that green and burnt sienna just make beautiful grays out here along with these violets and stuff you want the violets in there because it's cooler the grays and stuff are warmer but see these are all beautiful grays we we'll add a bit of light to it but these are all beautiful grays. see how they're more toned down down here more gray and that's a pretty color right down in there we'll just toss a little bit of that around down in there like that what did we do into this one up here at the top? We added some of that warmth, right? So we'll grab some of that warmth, that yellow, that warmth right in there, just a bit of that. We might add a bit more up to the other one. I'll push it around into some of that movement that I have there, okay? And uh, then we'll start to build a bit lighter right in here, a bit lighter and lift the pressure as you get down towards that shadow so it doesn't overpower that too much. Now I could, and this is where I always say, you know, I go back and I'll revisit. So I look at that and I just say, like maybe I could lighten up and give more power to the top front of that rose there, taking her up just a bit more so she has more power into the composition. Maybe this back petal here needs to be a little bit lighter 
These are all decisions that when you first paint it, you don't know. And I don't, I don't try to paint it all right then, right now. I'm gonna add just a bit of extender. This causes the color to slide a little bit more. I wanna increase the value, the lightness of this color. I've got good movement to it, but I wanna put on a little bit more and advance it off the surface. This is this part of the, you know, people say, well, how do you know to do that? This is this part of the look that I've created with the, the flowers. And so I'm, you know, this is probably my 174,000th rose, you know, so it's, it's something that I've created over the years that I like to do. I'm just, it's the contrast that I like to add and I look for and um, my customers like. So I'm just looking to that. I'm looking for the amount of contrast I want to have, but I don't always make them the same. I'll change the amount of contrast. Let's add a bit of light right in here. Just keep this one really kind of simple here. This is the one I want more stroke interest to, more light dark interest to. This one I want fading away here just a bit. So, um, and I can really pull your eye if I go back in there, and I know I took it out, but if I go back in there and add that little bit of violet right into that center, so blue and cracarone here, that little bit in, in red violet might be a better call, but that little bit of more violet right in there. And you see it creates just that extra little bit that just pulls your eye in there. It's just a touch, just a tiny little touch in there. It creates that contrast there that pulls that. And that works really well. Let's push just a bit of this into the background. Now this background's gonna start, we started with this background and some of you probably went, Dave, you've lost your mind as you're painting that. But it's all gonna soften out because as I add flowers and stuff, all that movement in that background is going to start to disappear. And I have learned that, you know, I've made some really nice backgrounds and then lost them as I added flowers. So I've learned to really go for it on the backgrounds because as I start to add flowers, it's going to diminish down. It's going to disappear. So let's just lighten this up a bit more. So when I'm doing this right now is most of this color that I'm working on is dry. It's wet here because I have a little bit of extender in it. But most of my color on the surface is dry, and I'm just making strokes, little marks, marks of color. So I work up and down the value scale, up and down the tonal scale. This is not blending. I'm not blending anything. I'm stroking tones of color here. That's how I like to do it. Okay, so I love this right in here. I want to see if I can preserve some of that. But it's not about me. It's about the client, but I do like that. Let's... Uh, Take some, let's go out here with our violets and blues. Let's come right on over here and we'll start making some of those beautiful colors. Not as dark as we can go right away, but let's just start making some of these beautiful colors of these African violets here. And some of them are gonna go very much violet here. So a lot more blue and violet right in here. So that's a real pretty color. That's going to be some of those violet, some of the colors of the violets right in here. And let's just start adding. And so what I'm going to do is, these violets are actually little, little flowers. They're one, two, three, four, five. Five petal little flowers here. And some of these look like they're like four almost. One, two, three, four. Yeah. And they're different colors. So there's obviously different kinds of them there. Um, but I want to... Kind of, you know, I like this one that has blue and then it picks up some of these red violets in there. So I want to kind of push, leaving some of this red violet, you know, push multiple colors into here. We'll go from the purples, the violets, out into the red violets and stuff out here, right around like that. And we'll push some of it right up here, some of these lighter colors right up here, some small. So I'm just gonna kind of push this into the background here, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is model it with different colors. So here I have a blue violet and a red violet and stuff, and we'll go more of a, a nice purple in there as well, more dark to get more of that purpley color, 
right in here as well. That purple is just a real good contrast color. So I'm going to just kind of stroke this in and around here and create, and I'm painting for color. So a lot of times you see artists start right away with shapes and stuff, and I'm not. I'm starting with color. I'm looking for the color and the movement of different colors. Here's some nice, beautiful violets here. And we'll let some of this just kind of come down here like this. We might put a little bit of a rosebud right up there as well. But I uh, want to get lots of, and so I'm going to play back and forth between the real purple color, which is right here, and then the violets all the way to the, the lighter violets. And you can go right to a blue violet as well over here because some of these African violets are more of a blue violet as well. So you can play that color into there, see? And that's what I'm looking for, This some of these colors. I'll shape them. I don't have to shape. You Like when you look at a, 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 a big glob of them here, you see some petals, but you don't see the individual flowers. And so the impressionists, what impressionists do a lot is we kind of squint down, we eliminate, when squinting down eliminates the midtones, it gives you the lights and darks. And so I just see the lights and darks and I paint the, the areas of the light and the dark of the painting. And I just kind of, I don't paint the flowers, I'm painting the color and the lights and the darks out here. So we'll continue this up here just a bit. And um, yeah, that'll work. And maybe some more heavier, sometimes some more purples and stuff down through here. Just quick little marks of color here. See, just, and, and see, if I paint a few blossoms out and then I just paint for color like this, that's just gonna look great. And then I'll leave that out. Very, very contemporary look to it. Let's um, get some more light right in here. We'll add some open medium. This is gonna keep it wet, but it's also gonna allow me to give it a different look to my colors. It keeps it from getting too opaque. So I'll let a little bit of transparency come through. And I'm gonna start shaping a few of these violets with some of the lighter color. Change it out a little bit, get some blue into that. So it changes here a bit. That's what's gonna make these kind of pretty here. And uh, so that's a, that's a good one. Let's get some more lighter blue. A little bit of the red, more of a real light kind of purpley kind of color here. Start to add, start to envision just a few little petals. You don't have to paint perfect little flowers here. They have kind of a pointed little oval petal, so I might want to point up a bit more some of these here. So try to get the petal shape pretty close. Let's, and those that are going to override, I'll add a bit more light to it here. Work it now. I do this. I don't mix it really well, but I do this and just kind of model the colors together here. There, like that, and bring those together. Let's grab maybe a slightly different tone right over here, and we'll and you know you envision kind of five petals, but then you only paint three or so, you know but you kind of vision like five petals there and paint just a few of them there. That'll work. So I don't need to get wild and crazy about painting a whole bunch of little flowers here because the color movement I already have has it done. And all I need after I move further out here is just some a few petals here to say, okay, those are, those colors are moving and your, your eye is going to say that's a flower and I haven't painted that much of it. And that's what an Impressionist does. That was what we do when we paint Impressionism. We don't need to paint everything. You know, it's like Monet said, leave 25% of the painting unfinished for the viewer's imagination to fi the finish. And it's very true. I can never get as, as as uh, 
let's see, as, as casual as he does with his marks. But uh, I'm never going to get there. I'm too, too rigid. But I sure, you know, I can come close. I can come close. Let's go up here, maybe slightly more onto the red side, a little bit of blue but slightly more onto the reddish side up over here. So we get a little different color in there for some of those. That's kind of pretty. So I'm just kind of sprinkling them around here, here like that. And they don't need to be, you know, absolutely perfect. They'll really come to life here in a minute. But now as I'm putting that around, you can see, you know, I could, and this is what I like to do. I always go back, I said, you go back to your major rose and you revisit her again. Let's just grab a bit of these colors and add those tones into these roses. And that will increase the harmony here of the painting, okay? Of this all going together. Let's put a little bit of that violet right in there. Even on that warm side right there, we'll put a little bit and it all works. Let's grab some of this, a little bit of white, just a touch lighter color. Add a few extra little ones right out here. You can push back any of your dark marks just by going over them a bit with some of this color. If you mark is too dark here, just like that, okay. And now, before I get going too far, the, the African violets have quite a large leaf on them. Some of these are huge leaves compared to the size. This one is, this variety is just a touch smaller. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add a few of those leaves, and we'll add a few rose leaves in here. A bit of pine green and some burnt sienna here. And let's come out here, and it's a short pointed oval here, short pointed oval here quite large compared to the light. And I'm just gonna take some of that color off here. We're painting casual. We're painting contemporary here. Short pointed oval here. And so I, and that open medium is gonna stay wet for a long time, but I like to put it on and then take it off a bit. And that creates the different tones of the color coming through there. Let's uh, take some of this color, and we don't need to do too much other than push the color down in here, because we can let the violet just kind of work the color so that they kind of work into each other right into there. We just need to see the color. So right out through here, I'm going to put a softer leaf. So I'm going to take more open medium, or even just a little bit of extender to thin out the color. Let's add a bit of the burnt sienna and even maybe a bit of the violet into this. This will see how it grays it all down. It makes a real soft gray. And I'll maybe make it a bit greener, but I want to make it softer. So how do you make it softer? This is my, I've always watched like over here some of my original background color. So I'm going to want to lighten it up. So the value becomes like the background. It has some of this, which causes the toning of it. It's softer. I'll add some extender to thin it all out. Does that, it's a process, right? It's a thinking of a process. So I adjust the value so it gets closer to the background. I'm still gonna take some of it off, which will soften it. But then I add some of that violet so it harmonizes with that, grays that down. And uh, so it's a process of, of how I'm gonna do it. So see how this color is much, it's green and nice, but it's soft to the background there. And then I can, take it off here and just lift it right off right here like this to allow some of that. And I can put more dark into it there if I want it. So that might be a pretty color. And you see it's different than this leaf over here. That might be a pretty little color back up over here. A little bit more pointed, bigger leaf. Push it off, lift it off there like that, sitting out there into that background right out there. See? And uh, so I adjusted it a bit. We might, and then I'll make some brighter ones too. Let's get a bit of a brighter green. 
some of my yellows, yellow grains into here. So I don't always just paint the tone ones. I like the, the color. If you have a variety of tones, you should have that variety expressing in your leaves here as well. So some of my leaves will have some brighter tones in it as well here. And, uh, and I, again, I like to keep it kind of kind of soft, kind of um, where it's not too much contrast to it. I want something down here greenish, but I want to have it with some sienna too, so it's a little bit warmer. I want to pull something right down here. Because this is, you know, I always think when I'm doing something like this, this is getting backed down. Okay, my stems are going to come right in here. Matter of fact, we can uh, give the idea of some stems right in here that just give a real nice movement to the flower there. Okay, it's a nice feeling of movement to the flower. But as I get down through here, I like to always kind of think, okay, I'm getting to the base of the 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 rose and the flowers so more leaves more weight more stuff coming on down over here I like that kind of stuff happening here in there and so I'll add it but we can take some darker blues darker purples darker purple marks in here that might be a bit much so I'll just take some of that out and that's just going to increase contrast what how much contrast does your client want? And uh, especially down in through here, this is the base. And see, I don't need to make anything with it because I already have a couple of flowers shaped up. I'm just increasing my violet, the purple, purple of the color, which increases the contrast in that area. See, so I'm increasing the, the purple nature of my painting here which when you like African violets, you like those purples and violets and red violets there. So that pulls that out a bit more here, which is quite nice. I'm gonna rinse some of that purple out because I'm gonna go revisit my rose up here again. A Little bit of yellow, some white, maybe a touch of that violet there, a little open medium just to make my color slide, I like the I like the feel of it, and I want to shape up my rose a bit more here. Bring a more rounding shape to this rose, bringing it up a bit. But you can see in this painting, the roses, yes, the roses have a lot of power, but so do the violets here. The violets have a lot of power as well in this painting. So let's close up, let's grab some of this violet and a little bit of this white right out here. And close up this edge a bit more of this rose here. There we go. And maybe a bit more light right here. Just a touch more. There we go. Make sure you, you keep that kind of uh, oval shape there that or we want to keep that oval shape but keep that bowl shadow in there at the same time there that bowl shadow is so important matter of fact I might just take a bit of this some purple and violet here and some open medium and even a little extender I use extender whenever I want to thin the colors and just re-push that mark right in there again just push that through so that that shadow stays there on that rose and that's it and again it's a it's a judgment call how much contrast do you want to keep onto that rose now so I have that light with that looks pretty good going up through there I could could have like a real back let's thin this little little extender a little open medium Right back up through here, a, a, a little rosebud would be pretty coming up through here, I think. Let's grab a bit of our dark. And the rosebud is more of an oval, and you don't need to do that much. You just kind of oval shape your center here. Just kind of put a little oval shape there. 
and we might even let it sit back behind that leaf. So I'll put this on and just drag that leaf here. Just leaves that little light back there. And maybe uh, maybe we'll make it a juvenile that's just beginning to open up here. So we'll pull in, imagine where the stem is. Just kind of pull it in there. And it goes, you know, when you're painting a painting like this, it goes pretty fast. So we're under an hour right now in painting this. See, that's a nice little color sitting back there. We can push that in right there. I think that'll sit back there and maybe uh, bring that green leaf. So I get a power going up through the center. I'll bring this green leaf, a little bit of light to it. Here, more of a yellow green. We'll bring some of these leaves up a bit more, more like a rose leaf coming up. Maybe a bit, even a bit of purple into your shadow. Why would you do that into the green? Harmony. And it looks great, see? It just pulls that right in together there. So there's a leaf coming right up to there. We could have a bit more yellow and light into that. Warmer. It's up to you. That's just all contrast. You have to decide. Let's bring this light right up in here. Right up. Right out like that so that leaf is there. We might push one more smaller one right in here. Cover up that one a bit. We can have a blending of rose leaves and the uh, African violet leaves. When I put a leaf that's out like that, I do like to take a bit lighter color just on the chisel of my brush and I like to give an idea of the vein line of the leaf because and that vein line just adds a little bit of motion or movement to the to the leaf sometimes and I like that so yeah so you're looking at some of that that color through there then now before I go well maybe I should go through and add a few more lights out into some of these little violets because some of them have light little tips and stuff here so they could get a bit more light into them which would help quite a bit in to uh, take the light of the roses out into some of these little African violets here so we'll just take a bit more light and hit a few of the, the tips here you don't have to hit the whole petal, just some of the tips to carry that light out a little further here. Let's uh, grab some of that right in here. This is a good spot because it's up against that rose. And so it gets that light of the flower right up against the light of that rose here. Right there before it diminishes down. There, and maybe... Uh, let it diminish down a little bit here. So other little color. So the more you stroke it, the more tones you actually get on it here. And so generally I'll work these for you know for a little while here, getting some of these other little tones here and there into these violets, because it does nothing but increase the violet nature of the painting and the, what the uh, client wants, violets. So, and just touch through there, that's a bit much. So your hands gotta look like that. <laughs> your hands gotta get all kinds of stuff on them, <laughs> you know, you have that. Okay, now, so I like some of that. Now let's look. Uh, we have to put the centers on these little violets and stuff, which is going to do a lot. But let's pull. I do like some of this and some of this out through here. I really want to see some clarity, I think. And you see, those are, are, this is a little rough on the edge, and normally I'd leave that in contemporary, but here it would, if I 
move this out a bit and create more of an edge, it's going to bring the rose up a little bit higher. So see, I just crisp up that edge just a bit here. And that looks a little better. We could even push through a little violet to set that rose further back right in there. Push, that color's still a little wet. Push and I'll push that green right into that rose, see? Right into that petal there. And it causes a bit of transparency. And then I'll, and I'll do that, you know, several times in, in paintings. And then I'm gonna bring up a little bit more color not out, right out to that edge, but pretty close. And just pull out and create another little uh, edge there. Let's take the chisel of our brush, chisel here, and that can be used to make a chisel of a, or the edge of a petal there, like that, that brings that in. That's kind of nice. And so I really, I mean, I, lo I love this. I feel that I could use a little bit more punch right in there, a little bit more interest right in there. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of my extender, push it right in there, and I'm going to paint a warm and cool in. And I'll use a, it's like a glazing technique here. You don't see me do this too, too much, but... I'll put a glazing technique in, a little warm, and then the violet down at the bottom. I'll push those colors together. See, I get a little bit more movement of the color. Then I'm gonna take some light and come back in and reset that so it gets a, what I'm looking for, and sometimes this takes me a couple times to do this, what I'm looking for is some additional movement into the flower additional brushwork and stuff like that into the flower here. And so as I come with the last ones though, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of warm yellow in with the white and I'll come heavier and hit a heavier mark of that right up there like that, right up into the front. And see, I can increase, now see I'm gonna pinch wipe my brush now, maybe even just touch it into some of that violet, get rid of that white and I can increase the roundness of the flower by pulling and lifting off, revealing some of that shadow. Remember I said the shadow is the most important part of the bowl of that rose. And that shadow is really important because it's tying the harmony of the two together, of the colors. Of the, it's, that shadow is bringing the color of the violets into the rose, see? So I do want to make sure I bring that out. So I lift off like that and you'll see me in several videos and stuff do those lift off techniques that are really great. But that just adds a little bit more movement into that rose and just a, you know, touch more. It just takes another little layer. Now if you're not careful, this is the thing and those are, those are great things to do because they add so much to your painting. But if you're not careful, you'll just build it all white. So the most important thing that you do every single time is that shadow. Always preserve your shadow. That's the most important thing to do, okay? All right, so I have some of that in there. I could use a few lighter, um, you know, indications of leaves or, you know, even some, even some blue-green leaves would be pretty in here. Green, blue, and then slightly lighter. See, that's a blue-green. Let's see what a touch of that would do into the painting. And a little bit of that would be fine. You don't want to carry this everywhere. So just because there's not enough of it into the painting, but little bits of it. Little. This is what the little sparks of color just add. And yeah, see, just... So you use it as an accent, not as a full color, just as a little accent to other tones around there. And like I said, the violets get very heavy. So what we want to do is we want to lighten up. Now we can light and uh, airy up the composition. So we can airy it all up with a blue green, a little yellow, a little light yellow. We're going to have some uh, light colors and stuff coming in, but little sparks of light, that could be anything will help you lighten up your painting here. And just sparks of light. And 
And sometimes I'll, let's just grab some of this green. Just little sparks. And sometimes you'll see uh, artists, especially impressionists, they'll come in and they'll grab some of this light, just little things like this, and they'll come in and start making little marks. And I do that sometimes too as well. Little marks into the painting that uh, they're, they're little marks of color that uh, add just sparks, life to the painting. And so and you do it if you want here. Little sparks just, sometimes I do it and I run, you know, like I'll run a color around and it doesn't always have to be light. It can be dark as well. For example, right out through here, um, there are small sparks of color. Let's just take this violet and just run that right out here into that background. Maybe take just a bit of that, but see, we'll leave some of that spark movement here and that just adds to the painting there see so if we start to get too heavy you start to add some of these sparks sometimes and a good impression you'll see we'll, we'll come back and take some of that out but see what is that well I don't know it could be a little bud it could be something just started up there or whatever you're painting the impression of a group of flowers that could have little leaves and stems and little stuff going on in there and you don't know so you know start adding little sparks of life into some of this and we go this little bit well I like taking your eye out a bit let's um let's uh, add just a bit of this violet, lighter violet, right out through here. Some of the movement into this flower it looks a little bit weak out there, a little too transparent, a little weak. So we'll just add a touch of the stuff there and maybe um, build up a little warm, some open medium here. Maybe build up right in here a bit more. And see, I use that open medium, it's going to stay wet, and I can just keep pulling off paint until I like where that sits. See, so I just, and see, it just brings that edge of that flower up. So you might, you know, stroke it a little heavier like this, okay? And then you just start pulling it off the paint and maybe pull back this way a bit until you like where that sits and I like my dirty finger little green in there and everything dirty fingers are a good way to carry color you know through your painting so yeah that worked little bits just fun little stuff try little stuff here let's warm this green up let's warm this up a little more yellow yellow green here into that leaf there that's kind of pretty so each time you know and it's just and well that was not nice let's just pull that through let's reset that edge a little more control with your finger there Dave so little bits little bits of color there like that that's quite and now let's, uh, so they have all of these pretty little yellow kind of, and it's maybe some burnt sienna red right in there as well. Let's take a little burnt sienna red, touch that right into a few of these where we're going to put some of the yellow centers here. These are actually kind of pretty little flowers. And, um, We'll model. Model means don't mix up real well. Just kind of tap it together. Some Hansa and some yellow oxide. One of the favorite centers I like to use on small flowers. Take a good look. What you want to do, start on the light side. Tap it. And then come right around to the dark side over here. Just don't add very much. Let's grab some more Hansa. Sometimes I'll use a little stick to steady my hand here so I can just tap in a little bit of color. That's all I want to do. A little bit of color, a little impression of the center there. 
like that. It's kind of pretty. And we'll just model those, so don't mix them. Don't mix them. Just little sparks. Sometimes, you know, those other ones over there look like they have just one little dot. Some have a couple. There, like that. And Now there's all different kinds of ways. You can relax these edges even more and paint them more impressionistic and, and stuff, but I think this gives you kind of a idea. It takes a long, I think my customer will like that. Here, let's, uh, and I'm gonna look right in here. I always look like this is where we originally put some of that dark color in there, what we wanna do in there. Um, I want to, uh, and I'll, I'll do this, you know, so water's your solvent. I'm going to push a little water right in there for a second. Let it sit for a second. Kind of clean my finger a bit, not too much there. And I'm going to push. And I like to see it, it softens that shadow where that rose is going down there into that shadow right back there. And I'm going to take some more violet. Push that in, violet and a little bit of light. So I'm looking at, when I do this, I'm looking at edges a lot. So I want that, I want a, a little bit more transparency. I want that edge, but I want a little bit more transparency right there. And that's a personal call, but you know, what you like to do, I don't like it all exactly the same there. So I'm gonna just lengthen the edge of that just a bit and then I'm going to add just a smaller mark of light white right out to here to get some of that movement right there. That's better. So I get that bit of transparency. That's your queen. Remember I said I go back and I visit, I revisit her several times during the painting. But I think here you, you have the rose and everything, but these violets kind of dominate everything. I can make them dominate even more. Like if you look along here, you got some of this nice purple color right there. I can make a darker blue purple color here and tap it right out here next to some of these uh, other little violets around like this to get that other little color into that center of those. Like you see right out there, that real dark purpley color. And, uh, but it's impressionism. You don't have to go for realism. It's impressionism. But see that little bit of purple in there gives a whole nother little character to, and you don't have to do, and you don't really want to do every one because you want some of them to stand out and be a little different and than just all these colors. So don't do all of them, but you can certainly see what that does. It just does nice things in the impressionism in there. So like if you got one like a um like here we'll we'll take it over and change your color. Change it over here a little bit more violet. Maybe that dot's a little big, I'll just take an edge of it off. This is some of the stuff I look at the very last. Maybe give that bit of yellow there, just a impression of a, of a set right in there. But uh, yeah. And then We'll put this all into a, let me just drag a bit of this up here. Kind of just take that off there like that. Sometimes I like to get more transparent out there towards the edges and stuff, you know, so let some of that just run off the edges. I don't like everything to be super even all the way around, you know. Um, let's warm lighten this one up in the front just a bit more. It's overall a little cool. We'll just push some of that together there. Right like that, just add some of that warmth. See, I paint a lot. I paint a lot for color, you know? More so, a lot of people always think, oh, you, you know, you paint all these roses. I'm moving and working color more than anything else, you know? Um, some of that warmth that I used there, that would look really nice into and this is what a lot of impressions will do you can make the whole feeling soften a bit you know later by coming back in again coming back in towards your painting 
and pulling so I have a real thin warm color light and pulling that back down and through in there and see it just kind of blurs it a little bit softens it so if you want your painting softer that's how you would do it you would come back in like this and soften back through pull out some but get that nice softer warmth that we said we could do if you wanted towards the end of the painting here and I think this will probably work pretty nice here pulling just a bit of that in that's up to you whether or not you do that but it uh, so it what it does is just pulls this nice common color softens everything out blurs it out a little bit more and makes a uh, nice pretty little composition for you I could work that just to that rose, that secondary rose, a bit more. Um, if you want to get more movement and stuff to your painting, you can bring that stem of that secondary rose higher up into the composition. It's like what you have to do, and you know, I work a lot in, in Photoshop and stuff, and it's like in Photoshop and stuff, you put things in in layers. And so, you know, I imagine my painting and stuff here in layers. But I can bring a layer up higher, so I can bring this, like a, the edge of this, of this uh, stem of this rose, up a little higher. So now you see that movement. See, and do you do it or not? That's a personal choice. I can bring this this rose edge right up here, so where those violets set back behind there, and so that brings a different, uh, unique movement into the painting. Maybe a darker violet and you know burnt sienna kind of look into some of that there as well. There, I mean that is a and see, you add every little tone, every little stroke that you do, adds a little bit more, you know, to the painting here. And uh, so I like that. I like maybe some of this coming out here. Some of this other burnt sienna green. I just love, I love the burnt siennas and the violets and stuff here. The warm, the plain of the warm and the cool just adds so much. Let's just pull that out there. Just adds so much to the painting, you know, there. So anyway, there's all different kinds of ways you can do it. We can do a little negative painting here. Pop this one out a bit more. Some of that movement. That's higher contrast. Do you want to leave that higher contrast down there? That's your choice. I'm going to put just a touch of that warmth right in there. There. I like that warmth coming up against those cools. Just adds so much. But anyway, that just gets you, that gets you going there. Gives you an idea here. It's a nice little painting. Doesn't take too long to do that. You know, it's like my teacher... He was such a great teacher, great mentor for me, and he always told me, yes, it takes an hour and 28 years <laughs> so to, to paint something. It takes you 28 years of practice to paint it in an hour, you know, because you, more than anything else, what it gives you is this confidence. You, you have to paint for a certain amount of time to get the confidence that you do it, and then also to learn how to just let it go and just paint something, you know, but... Uh, there you go. There's a, a nice little one there, and I'll, I'll sign it. Some of you were asking me about my signature, you know, when you see on the paintings. Is I sign here with the date, and then on the other side over here, I put a serial number. I put serial numbers on all of my paintings because we track all of our paintings. And when I did uh, one of my first commissions for the White House, in, in the, the president in the White House, the White House collection, was they always said, can you give it a serial number? And I started putting them on the front, and so that's why you see that. And so it tracks the paintings, and sometimes you see a little zero right above it. That means it's the original. So this one will get a zero and the serial number and then the number here. And that serial number, the way in which we number it, tells it the month, it tells us by how we read that serial number the day, the month, and the year that it was painted so you know when that thing was painted, not only from the signature over here, but... That's how you do it. And there's a nice little painting there. I think my clients will like that. And uh, I'll get it framed up. And those of you that are in the uh, um, in the uh, 
uh, memberships and stuff. We will put final photos of it, and I'll even drop in some of the uh, reference photos that I used. And again, like always, if you have any kinds of questions, just drop those questions in. We'll go back to our beginning lessons. On the next one, I'll have another beginning rose and a western coming before we go back to seascapes, landscapes, and all of that other kind of stuff, okay? Lots of them coming back up, and we'll go back to the limited palette as well. But it's kind of nice to play with some of these colors. And after I get all of you painting some of that, we'll, we'll start to, we're going to, if we get really good with that six color set and painting that, we're going to start adding pigments and we're going to start studying those pigments as we add it. So we learn all of those properties of those pigments and that's how you become a better artist. So we practice techniques, we practice shapes, we practice brushes, we practice techniques. Okay. Alrighty. There you guys go. I'll see you on the next one.